Well, praise the Lord. Once again, this is Pastor Donald. God bless each and every one of you that have tuned in today. God is good and his mercy endure forever. We're excited about this series that uh, we're starting out to close out this year. And all I want to really just inspire us with these next few weeks is you have what it takes. And, and knowing that you have what it takes is so powerful um, because what the Lord is doing in each and every one of our lives, if you are submitting yourself to him, he is stretching you, but he is pushing you because he's ready to manifest through you. Listen, that's what I'm so excited about as, as I think about what God wants to manifest. It's not the things I desire, but it's what he desires for my life. And we've been talking about these last few weeks and even months about God's will versus my will, um, God's desire, God's plan for our life. And whenever God has a plan for something, it means that even though it tarries, you better wait on it because it's going to surely come because his plan creates hope in all of us. And as the Bible says in the book of Romans, hope make them not ashamed. And so we have to know who we are and what God is doing in our lives in this season and in this time. Um, and, and so we look here at 1 Peter chapter number two, verse number nine. And, and this scripture establishes who we are and what God wants to do through us. And is that my assignment today is to to begin to get our minds thinking on what God wants us to be. Because many times we undermine his kingdom word and his kingdom will for our life. And I've told you over and over again, the kingdom, God's kingdom, when Jesus talks about seek ye first the kingdom, he's talking about his divine perfect will for our life. That's his will is, is what he desires for our life. His plan is the role that we take to arrive at his will. And we undermine the kingdom and the blessings of it by the way we speak. Um, and when we speak contrary to what God has said, we begin to hinder what the Lord is doing in our life. Uh, we're, we're, we're told in the word that we are to take captive every thought, every imagination. He has equipped us spiritually to do that, to bring it into the obedience of Jesus Christ. And we need to understand that when you don't use your weapons for the proper thing, if you use it with flesh and blood, you actually speak strongholds in your life. You will, you will create bondages in your life just by how you speak, because our world is framed and created by our words. When I mean, the Bible says in Genesis chapter one, in the beginning was the word and God said, that means that God framed everything that was made by his word. And your thoughts and your words control your life, people of God. And if your life is not where you want it to be, you got to first of all begin to inspect your words. The dominating thoughts that 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 frame your life is, is what you meditate on. And this is why God told Joshua that you got to study your word. You got to meditate on your word day and night because meditate means to concentrate. And whatever you concentrate on is what you will be establishing. Lord, have mercy. So you got to you got to watch your thoughts and you got to watch your words because your thoughts will become your words. Hallelujah. And your words, if you're not careful, you got to watch your words because they'll become your actions. And if you don't, if you're not careful, if you're not watching uh, your actions, they'll become your habits. And if you're not careful with your habits, your habits will become your character. Lord, have mercy. And if you don't watch your character, your character will become your destiny. It all starts at your thoughts. And that's why the writer here, Peter, begins to write to us in verse number nine. And he says that you got to know you are a chosen generation. You are, you are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. You are a peculiar people. You, you have now been called forth that you should show forth the praises of him that has called you out of darkness into marvelous light. You see what Peter begins to establish? Is? He's establishing that you got to come out of darkness. Your thought process has to come out of darkness. Your words have to come out of darkness because the pretext of this chapter, Peter starts out by verse in verse number one and two by telling us to lay aside 
all malice, all guile, all hypocrisies, all envies. Here it is, all evil speaking. Because as newborn babies, we got to desire the sincere milk of the word that we may grow. That That's so powerful because if you're not growing in the Lord, it's because you haven't laid some dark things aside. And the proof is in the pudding because as a man think of, so is he. So what you think is what you speak. And when you speak it, it affects how you operate, how you talk. It creates habits in you that you say, oh, pastor, I've just been doing this. This is me. It's me. This is how I lived all my life. Listen, maybe that's not a good thing. Maybe you got to change your way of thinking and speaking so that you can become now a man and put away childish things. Listen, people of God, the greatness of it all is that you got to remember you are chosen. That's what he said right here in the first part of the verse. You are a chosen generation. You are a chosen generation that you got to remember this. You got to always tell yourself this, that, that your decision making is not made off of the emotions of where you are. Your decision making is based off of where you're going and by where you're going, by the vision God has given you, you make the decisions on the thoughts you have and the words you say. You got to know that the Bible says it clearly that that even the children of Israel had this right before their eyes. And I, I really want to use them as we journey with this verse because they they show us how to think and how not to think. Because in Numbers chapter number 14, verse 1 through 39, we see the promise that God had put in place for them that they were in a place that only supposed to took 14 days for them to go through, but it took them 40 years and over half of them did not come out. Why? Because they were driven by fear. They were driven by emotions. They were not driven by the mindset that they were a chosen generation. Choosing God, when, when God chose you, he said he chose you before the foundation of the world. He knew you before you was even in your mother's womb. He chose you. You didn't choose him. That means your merits, your credits, your works, your talents, your looks, your family background. There's nothing that God looked in you when it comes down to what you thought you were that affected his choosing you. He chose you because he knew you and he knew what he put in you. Pastor, teach them today. And whenever we're driven by fear, whenever we're driven by our emotions, we allow our words to create our environment. That's why it said in Numbers of uh, chapter 14, in that latter part of that chapter, that they said, we are as grasshoppers. And the way they saw themselves were the way they were speaking. And I need you to ask yourself to question, how are you speaking? Because how, how you're speaking is truly showing how you're thinking. And how you're thinking is really aligning with either God's will or your will. Wow. You have to change your words. And when you change your words, you change your reality in this world. That's why the Bible clearly gives us instructions that you have the faith of, of the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen, which means that in this season, in this last month, you have the ability to, to frame or reframe your life. That if your life is not in a good place, you have the power in your words and your words will establish your thoughts. You have to get to the point in your name and in your thought process that you begin to declare who you are. And this word tells us today we are a chosen generation. That means that you are chosen your children is chosen. Your children's children is chosen. But you got to choose between blessings and cursings. And that's why the Bible tells us here that we have allowed the wrong things in our thought process. You've chosen God. That means you are God's child. 
Why are you not acting like you're living in the obedience of his commands? Lord, have mercy. Do you not understand that when you decide to take your goods and get your inheritance and lunch out on what you want to do, you're just like the prodigal son. And we know the outcome of the prodigal son. He squandered everything, was at the trough of sloth, and he had to come to himself. That means he had to remember who he was. He was of the royal family. His father was a king, and he said, man, the servants have it better than me right now. What did he do? He changed his thought process. He began to start speaking and said, I'm going back to daddy's house. Maybe what you need to do is look at what you're looking at and, and realize if this is slop, I got to get up from here. Come on, pastor, because the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That's what John 10 and 10 says. It says he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And when the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, what he's coming after is you being the chosen one. Him coming after you means that, that he knows you have what it takes. You're the gift that God wants to give. And so what the enemy tries to do, the enemy tries to destroy, he tries to steal, he tries to kill because the enemy wants you to depend on your carnality. As long as we depend on our carnality, we'll see our frailties, we'll see our weaknesses, we'll see our, our failures, we'll see the, the insecurities of who we don't know who that we are. And that right there shows us that the Lord is, has a standard for us. Because you do know that the enemy will not mess with anything that has no threat to it. <laughs> it's because you are a threat. That's why the enemy tries to mess your mind up. He tries to get you to speak on all this negative stuff and all these negative things and all these negative people because when you get consumed by that, you now being is under carnality's control. Listen, there's a word in, in, in Numbers 14, verse number 34 that I want you to hear and hear it clearly, that the word says that because the people of God kept murmuring and complaining, they kept, they kept talking about what they was going through. They kept talking about where they had come from. They, had, they kept talking about the giants in the land. They, they were talking about everything but what God told them to go spy out. God told them to go over into the land, spy it out, and look at your inheritance. But they chose to look at the giants. They, they chose to look at how frail they were. They chose to, to look at what they didn't have. And God began to tell them something that I want you to hear today. I want you to hear in verse number 34 what God said to them. Because when you hear this, it will change your way of thinking people of God. The Bible says in, in Numbers 14, verse 34, listen what the Lord said. He told them, he said, that after the number of the days in which you have searched the land, even 40 days, each day for a year shall you bear your iniquity. What was their iniquity, pastor? Their iniquity was that they were murmuring and complaining. Their murmuring and complaining was showing they were doubting. Their doubting was saying that they didn't believe. And because of that, that was sin. That was the iniquity. But I want you to notice what God said. He said, even 40 years, you shall know the breach of the promise. He said right here in the word, even 40 days, each day for a year. Let go. You didn't catch that. Let me, let me donalize it for it. In other words, he was saying for every day that you complain, that's a year you will wonder. Wow. Good God from Moha. When I read this, I said, Lord, forgive me of all my sins. Do you not? Let me tell you one more time. Maybe you didn't hear me when I just said, he said for every day, 
you complain, that computes to a year. That means a day for a year. Here's the principle I'm trying to give it to. Every day you complain, you are potentially locking up your destiny for a year. Wow. I hope that just helps somebody right there because the enemy is trying to make you depend on your carnality so that you can destroy your character because it says we are the chosen generation. And there are some benefits of being chosen because when you are chosen, God blesses you beyond measure. He gives you all spiritual blessings. When you are chosen, you have inherited a resurrected power that even though you may get knocked down in three days, you got to get back up. You can inherit a powerful fruit of the spirit that you have the power now to bind and to lose. You have the gift to love, the gift to suffer long. You have the gift to have faith. You have patience. You have temperance. And against such, there's no bondage against you. That's because you're chosen. But whenever the enemy can get you to murmur and complain and to step out of the authority of the ambassadorship that God has given you, you are now in danger of that every day you complain, you are putting your destiny in the locks of another year. I don't know about you, but I don't want to go into 2024 already locked up. Come on and help me somebody. You already have claimed, complained long enough. Listen, but I'm thankful God can turn it around just by us believing. But how do we do that? We first of all got to understand if the enemy is trying to steal our identity, if he's trying to kill our character, he wants to deposit a generational curse to destroy it. That's why the word came to the children of Islam and said, choose you this day whom you're going to serve. You're going to either choose blessings or you're going to choose cursings. But that cursing is just not just for right now. It's for generation after generation. Those blessings is just not for right now. It's for generation and generation. Are you speaking things in your life? This is affecting your children's life, your children's children life because this is the thing we got to understand that as Jesus said in Matthew 4 and 4 it is written man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Do you hear what that just said? That you don't even have to come up with your own words for day by day. All you got to do is speak the words that God have already spoken out of his mouth because see I'm so thankful this battle's not mine it belongs to the Lord. Go ahead and tell yourself, I, I can do this. You, I'm the gift. God has given me what it takes. You see, because many say that, well, I, I don't know a lot of word or, or I don't know the Bible, the Genesis, the Revelation. You got to use what you have, man. You got to use what God of our, you know, God said, I'm love. You better use it up. You, you know that God said, I, I so love the world that I gave my only begotten son. You better use it up. You know that the Lord said, treat them, treat their neighbor as you do yourself. You, you better use it up. You got what it takes. All you got to do is use it. And God knew this. And, and so God says, remember you're chosen. You got to start making decisions, not based off your emotions, not based off of where you are. You got to start making decisions out of the outcome that God desires for your life. And God said, I want you to be more than a conqueror. And being a conqueror means that I have conquered everything the enemy meant for my evil. God knew you and he still chose you. If God chose you, don't you know God has his hands on your life? So what's hindering you is not the giants in the lands. It's the words and the thoughts that's coming out your mouth. Lord, have mercy. All you got to do is think about what's in God's hands. 
Think about how in God's hand is his protection, how he kept the devourer away from you. There's things that didn't happen that you didn't even know was planned to happen. There's things that God has done to protect you from yourself. Not only God is protection, but his hand is in your life as provision that he provides. He makes it rains on the just and on the unjust. He does good to the those who do good and do evil. His hands is promotion that people can't promote you. You can't even promote yourself. But when God is ready to shift you, he can elevate you to places that eyes haven't seen and ears haven't heard and hearts haven't comprehended. But you got to remember you're the chosen generation. But not only did Paul or Peter say this, but Peter also said that you are a royal priesthood. You are, you are a holy nation. And people of God, you, you got to understand and you got to accept your royal covenant. A covenant means that there is a bind between two people. There is a commitment between two people. There is a, a covenant that says you just can't just jump out just because you want to jump out. A covenant is saying that, that I'll be your God and you'll be my people. And God says, I have given you a royal covenant. You, you are a royal priesthood. And that priesthood is established because a priest speaks the word. Lord, have mercy. A priest is one that declares something. A king is someone that declares something. And the Bible's telling us right here, we got to speak the word. The reason why we're not prospering, the reason why we're not moving, and the reason why we're going through so much is we're speaking our calamity instead of speaking our covenant. God said, if I be for you, I'm more than the world against you. Listen what the word says in Job 22 and 28. He says, thou shall decree a thing and it shall be established unto thee and the light shall shine upon thy ways. What are you saying to me, pastor? What are you saying to yourself? That's what I'm saying. What are you decreeing? What are you declaring? What are you establishing by your words? What are you establishing through your thoughts? Because as you think, that's what you become. And people of God, I'm so thankful that Jesus gave us the assurity that we're chosen priests, we're chosen kings, not by our own doing, not that we gave ourselves a title, but the Bible says in John 15 and 16, you did not choose me, but I chose you. For an appointed time, you, I appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit shall remain, that whatever you ask of the Father, it shall be given unto you. Go ahead and say it. I, I'm a king's kid. Hallelujah. I, I'm that royal priesthood. I, I'm a king. I'm, I'm a nation. I'm a peculiar people. Do you hear what he says that you are a royal priesthood? You are the ambassador. You are a representative of the kingdom. You are a king's kid. That means you have access to the throne of grace. That he said you can come boldly asking what you, your, what you will. That that when you are a king's kid and you are a holy nation, that means you're just not a little country town. You're not just a little bitty city. You're not just a little state. You are a country. Hello, somebody. You are a nation. You, you rule and govern. That's, that means dominion, people of God. See, we're moving out of religion now, man. We're ruling into the authority and the ambassadorship of who we are as children of God. Because I'm coming to tell you, people of God, 2024, the number eight comes out of that two zero plus um, two four equals eight. And eight means new beginnings. And that means manifestation. And God is saying you have access when you declare who you are every morning, every day. You are establishing divine assignments for your day. You are speaking life or you're speaking death because it's in the power of your tongue. You got to begin to start consecrating yourself, people of God, that you set time aside each and every day to begin to declare who you are. This is what I do with us on our intercessory calls. Every morning, I, I declare
declare a word into your life to, to cause you to begin to think about your day, the relationships you're going to have, the people you want to meet, the things you want to do, the places you're supposed to go, the assignments that's in your life. These are the things that will direct your words and direct your thoughts. But if you're thinking evil, if you're thinking death, you're going to speak death things. You're going to speak negative things. You're going to speak the, the things that's going on around you. And I'm guilty of it too. But we got to start reminding ourselves with the king's kids. We have access. We not only have access, we have abundance. Because being a nation means that every resource, every supply, everything that's in the land belongs to us. That's what Numbers chapter 14 establishes that the Lord told the children of Israel that everything in the land is yours. Just leave the giants alone. Because as we established, the enemy wants you to look how big they are. He wants you to look at how big your problems are. He wants the, you to look at how big the, 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 the enemy is around you. But he said that ain't important. Because that's not your battle. <laughs> what's important is you learn what's in your land so you'll know how to take it. Man, I'm about to help somebody in here. Because a priest pronounces blessings. A priest is the one that blesses the people, blesses the land. In the Bible, the priest was the one that the people would come to to pray with and be consecrated with. The priest was the one that would go in the temple and hear the word of the Lord and share it with the people. When you know you are a royal priesthood, you're not only one that's pronouncing blessings, but in a palace is the priesthood, the royalty of being a king is he can declare a thing and it's established. And I'm helping somebody today because what you declare on this earth shall be declared in heaven. What you declare in heaven shall be loosed here on earth. Man, go ahead and tell yourself, I have a authority as a king's kid. Listen, my words have power. You have two bricks in your hands. You got to learn how to build, baby, with these bricks. You have the two bricks to build everything in your life that God has planned for you. Your word and your thoughts. Go ahead and say it. My words and my thoughts. I can build a kingdom with my thoughts and my words. Do you not know that when the children of Israel had to walk around the walls of Jericho, God shut their mouths up for seven days because he wanted them not to speak what they saw, but to think about what he said. He told them, you're going to have this land. This land is yours. Now, what they saw was the walls of Jericho, uh, something that stands in between you and your promise. Lord, have mercy. That may be your emotions. That may be your insecurities. That may be your depression. That might be your negativity. That may be your financial state. That might be your family problem. Whatever it is that's a wall between you and your promise that's what God says. Shut up talking. Lord, have mercy. Go ahead. Tell your eyes to quit talking. Quit talking to me. See, because when you put your eyes on what God says, a king declares in an authoritative way. When a king makes a decree, a decree means he legislates it. He structures it. It, it causes restructure. It creates a word to go through the land. When you restructure, when you speak good, over your situation, when you speak good over your life, when you speak good over your relationships, over your husband, over your wife, over your children, over your family, over your finances, everything you decree has the power to alter the destiny in you. You have the power to alter your family, alter your children's life, alter your situation, alter your finances, but it's what you think 
and how you speak. Well, pastor, I speak it all the time, but do you believe what you're speaking? Lord, pastor, leave me alone. Because see, you got to get to the point in your life that you refuse to settle for anything beneath what he's promised. Listen what the word says here. You are a peculiar people that should go forth. You see what he says? He says you are a peculiar people. That means you're different. You're not the same as everybody else. You won't fit in the crowd. You, you won't be able to hang out with everybody that's hanging out because as the scripture says here in verse number six of chapter two of first Peter, he says that Jesus is the chief cornerstone. He is elect, he's precious, and you got to believe on him. That means that if you believe on him, he'll never disappoint you. But when you don't believe, it's not the reason that you are trying to blame it to be. It's not that God don't is not wanting to bless you, but you don't believe in the blesser. It's not that God does not want to heal you, but you don't believe you already have your healing. He says here in verse number seven of second Peter, first Peter chapter number two, he says that believe he's pressure, believe that you're not disobedient, believe that he is the builder, the chief, the head corner. He is not a stumbling block. But see, when you stumble it's because you don't believe. Come on and help me. He said it's being the disobedient, but you are appointed. That means there is an appointed time for your life that the Bible says it in 1 Corinthians 13. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. What are you trying to tell me, pastor? When you start speaking and thinking in a mature way. When you become that person that accepts who they are, you will begin to speak what it is. That's, that's what I love about this word right here because my decisions that God gives me, it now allows me not to settle. I'm going after the promise. And God is pushing a lot of us. He's urging a lot of us. He's stretching a lot of us. He's making a lot of places uncomfortable because we've settled in these places. But what God is saying, your one decision, your one word, your one thing is one thought, one word away from it shifting the whole atmosphere. And as we pinnacle out of 2023, we got to start leaning into 2024. How are you going into the new land? How are you going into your new season? How are you going into your new territory? Because when you shift your atmosphere, you can shift your atmosphere over your relationships, over your over everything that's connected to you. And I'm speaking it now that, Lord, connect me with the people that I need for the next place in my destiny. Lord, remove from me the people is not that's not going with me. Lord, align my house with peace that nothing that's unpeaceful will enter into it. Lord, line my children up with the perfect will of their destinies that they'll prosper in every area of their life. Lord, build a hedge of protection around everything that's mine that the canker worm and the thief can't have it. Do you hear what I'm telling you? Your destiny and the quality of your life is related to how you speak. I'm thinking about it right now. I'm, I'm telling you right now, you ought to declare a fast over your life that for the next 21 days, you're getting away from negativity. That means if you got to walk away from it, that means if you got to hang the phone up from it, if that means you got to close the blinds, close the TV, shut the TV off, whatever you got to do, get away from the negativity. Because the negativity, as we see in Numbers chapter 14, is what's causing the people to perish in the wilderness. But the Bible said that Caleb said, man, we can take this land. There was an eyeball, a peculiar person that said, we can take this land. This man, he said, the grapes are large. The land is beautiful. It's ours. Do you hear what I'm telling you? Who's the Caleb in your life? Are you allowing the voices of positivity to tell you what's yours? Or are you allowing the voices of negativity to tell you how big the giants are? You got to know that abiding in the righteous character of God is what's going to establish your thoughts. 
If it's not holy, it can't help you. Pastor, you better leave me alone. If it's not holy, it can't help you. Listen what 1 Peter 2 verse 9 says. It says that, that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you from where, Pastor? Out of darkness into the marvelous light. That means that I got to show forth the praises. I show forth the praises through my character. My character will show how I stand. And my stand has to be built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness. Listen what Jesus said in Matthew 6 and 33. He says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Do you understand what Jesus was saying when he said, seek the kingdom? When you seek the kingdom, you're, you're, see, you're asking and it shall be given. You're seeking, you shall find. When you're knocking and the door shall be open. He said, if you're asking, you're asking questions, God, what do you want from me? God, 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 what are you wanting to do in my life? God, what are you trying to remove out of my life? You're, you're, you're asking, you're seeking, you're looking for the answer. The only way place you need to be looking is right here in his word. His word will tell you everything you need to be doing. And when you begin to start seeking, he says, then you can begin to knock. That means that you're getting God's attention because you're looking for more of him. You're spending more time with him. And that's when he'll put you at the door. And when God opens the door, no man can close it. Listen, you got some choices you have to make. The choices you make will determine what you're going after. If you keep choosing to be the old you, you're not, not going after the new you. If you keep making choices to keep doing the way the same things over and over again that you used to always do, you're trying to put new wine in old bottles. And I want to tell you today, it just ain't going to work. <laughs> You have what it takes. You just got to take the next step in your life to expand your life. Because see, this the people you hang around, the crowds you hang around will also show what you're seeking. If you're hanging around a bunch of foolishness and chaos and negativity and, and people are just wasting time in their life. Listen, you're going to become what you what you hang around. Listen, you got to start making up your mind. You got to start hanging with people that's where you're trying to go. You got to be around people that's thinking higher than you think. You got to be around people that's positive, that, that don't want to be in the dumps, don't want to be in the dark. They like to hang out in the light. You got to get around the right type of people because the right type of people and the right type of place will create the convictions you maintain. Listen, when you're lazy and slothful and you hanging around people that's lazy and slothful, they'll keep telling you, you all right. You'll tell them they all right. But man, when you hang around people that's sharp, people that's, that's on the edge of breakthroughs, people that's, that's on, 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 on focused on headed in, in, in multi-dimensional places, do you hear what God is telling you? It'll create a new conviction in your life. The man, I just can't get by. I just, I just can't keep haphazardly living. I just can't keep talking to talk, but I'm not walking to walk. I got to be about my father's business. You, you remember how Jesus said that when his mother and father was looking for him? Jesus said, I can't just keep hanging out with y'all. I, I just can't keep hanging around being normal. I'm not normal. I'm peculiar. He said, I got to be about my father's business. Do you hear what God is telling you? You can't keep thinking and hanging around people that are speaking the things you're not. Come on and help me somebody. God says that you are a kingdom representative. You are an ambassador. You represent the kingdomship of almighty God. When you walk in the room, a declaration has been made that the joy of the Lord is my strength. When you walk in the room, you're the light that forces darkness out. When you walk in the room, you make demons tremble because you have what it takes. And I want to encourage you today, people of God, that when God shows you who you are, don't live no less than that because anything less than the best is sin. Do you hear what this scripture says in 1 Peter chapter 2 at the latter part of verse number 9? He said he has made you to go forth 
that the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. People of God, God is calling you. God is calling you to prove what is good and perfect from above. He has built you to be a spiritual house. He has called you to be a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices. And whenever you begin to start giving those spiritual sacrifices, you know what the word says, present yourself as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Because when I start having an authentic reason to celebrate, ha, that means that I, I'm, a, I'm a pioneer. I'm creating reasons to give God praise. I'm, I'm creating an environment to give God glory. I'm, I'm creating a moment to give a pause break. Ha, listen, what God is telling me to tell you today, people of God, as Philippians 4 and 8 says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are noble, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good report. If there be any life, if there be anything praiseworthy, he says, think on these things. See, when you create an authentic reason to celebrate all you got to do is think about how good God's been to you. All you got to think about is how God is righteous, that, that even when you wasn't right, God made it right. Even when you were dirty, he made you pure. Even when things that, that was not lovely, he brought loveliness out of it. Even when the bad report came from the doctor, you heard a good report. If there be any life, if there be any praise, Think on these things. That means that no matter where you are, what you're going through, who you're facing, find the positive in it. And when you begin to praise him for where he's brought you from, you can begin to start just thinking about what the Lord has done. He, how he rescued you from yourself. How, how the thoughts were consuming you when the enemy came in like a flood, but the Lord lift up a standard. How he rescued you from your own self-destruction. How he redeemed you. How he took you and washed the mud off of you and took the, the smell off of you and put a new robe on you and put the signet ring on you and, and gave you a celebration party that the son, the daughter have came back home. He restored you. He put you back in your rightful place. And people of God, if God did all of that on Calvary for you, if he does it over and over again for you each and every day, you better know who you are. If God did not let you die in it, it's because he was bringing you up to live through it. Pastor, go ahead and make me shout. He's restoring you. And when you praise him for what he taught you, when you praise him for what you learned in your valley, when you praise him for how you grew through your gloom, that's when the power of truth comes forth. That the power of said is not by might, nor by power, but by the spirit of the Lord. This season we're in, people of God, we got to reign in our spirit because he says, if we die with him, we will reign with him. There's a power of truth that you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. You got to know that when you praise him for what he's taught you, he will teach you how to praise him through the power of trust that you're not trusting yourself, you're not trusting man, but you're trusting God. And you gotta trust that he that begins a good work is faithful to performing it to the coming of Jesus Christ. You gotta praise him with the power of your tongue. That means that everything that come out your mouth, it ought to have a praise on it. First Thessalonians chapter number five tells us, in everything, give thanks. For this is the perfect will of God. You may not be able to be thankful for everything that came through, but through everything, you ought to have a praise on it. Come on and help me. That means I'm finding God in the midst of it all. I got to use the power of my tongue because I'm losing some things in my life. I want to know that when I speak it, 
and it's establishing my words or writing the vision and making it plain. My words, even though they're tearing, I got to wait on it because it's going to surely come. Divine timing and destiny moments have to cross paths. And when they meet up, that's when you find your deliverance. People of God, I'm so excited because listen, this is a testimony season. When we get into this type of season that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver them from them all. When we understand that in times past, we didn't act like his people, but now we are the people of God. We are the ones that have obtained mercy. We are the ones that, that walk in mercy. And so now we are the ones that's got to show and give mercy. You have what it takes. We think about the gifts that's coming. But God says, you're the gift. You're the gift that I want to give. And I want to encourage you today, people of God, change your language, change your thinking, establish your thoughts, watch your thoughts because they'll become your words. Watch your words because they'll become your actions. Watch your actions. They will become your habits. Watch your habits because they'll become your character. Watch your character because it'll become your destiny. And I don't know about you, but I know my destiny is great. I know what God has prepared for me. Eyes haven't seen and ears haven't heard. I know God has prepared a destiny in your life that every heart's desire, it can come to pass. But you got to stop looking at the giants. You got to stop comparing yourself to all your problems. You got to start speaking what God says. Listen, people of God, man, I hope this word has been a blessing to you. It's been a blessing to me to receive it and prepare it and deliver it to you. I pray you will go on to the website, check out the other message God has blessed us with. If the Lord is blessing you in your life through this ministry, I encourage you to sow a seed in some good ground. God is doing great and marvelous things through, through this ministry. But more than anything, I want you to know God is preparing you to walk with the King. Go to www.myohbc. There you can find other sermons, other lessons. You can give, you can donate. Whatever God is leading you to do in this season to become what he's called you to be, I just prepare, just believe he's put it in my spirit and deposited in yours that you're being prepared to walk with the king. This is Pastor Richard Donald. I love you. May heaven smile upon you. This is our prayer for you.